we are in the second chapter of uh, Jackson and this is on the boundary value problems in electrostatics. We will have to discuss the ways to solve Laplace or Poisson's equation. Now, the, there are ways to solve Poisson's or Laplace equations. There are actually three ways. The very first one is the method of images and the second one is the separation of variables, separation of variables and then the third one is the finite element analysis. The method of images is the one which is known to you from your basic electrodynamics that you design a geometry, you design the boundary condition which gives you your desired potential on a given boundary. And separation of variables, you know that if we are not able to solve a differential equation, we use the method of separation of variables. We consider two or three variables in it and then we solve them independently and we couple the solutions. And finite element analysis is limited to two dimensions only, though it is more powerful than the previous two, but it is limited to two dimensions only. So the three dimensional cases cannot be covered in this one. And method of images, which we will start here in Jackson, is, it is a technique with the help of which you design your geometry like uh, you create your desired potential on a given boundary. For example, there is a boundary on which I want to have zero potential, but there is a charge there, means a positive charge, so that positive charge will have some potential on that boundary. Clear? Now, how I can get my desired potential on this boundary? One way is I remove the charge, but that's not the solution. The way is, if I put exactly at the same distance from that boundary a negative charge of the same magnitude, then what will happen? This potential and that potential will exactly cancel on the boundary and I will have zero potential on the boundary. That is called the method of images. Like this charge is having, this charge is an image charge. And this image helped me in generating the desired potential on the surface. So that's why it is called method of images. Now we will discuss first a simplest case and then we will go to uh, a bit complicated case and which will also give us the idea about the Coulomb's law as well. Yes, image they will be opposite. If your source charge is positive, its image will be negative. If it's the source will be negative, image will be positive. So they will be the couple, right? <coughs> So the very first I am discussing is 
a simple example. Now in this example, let's have a ground plane conductor. This is a grounded plane conductor. Grounded means its potential is equal to zero. Means like it is touching the earth. Earth we consider ground compared to the other potentials. And we put at a certain height from this conductor, at a certain height h, a charge plus q. And on this side we are having vacuum and here we are having a conductor. Now this one is grounded. Grounded means that phi will be equal to zero. But due to this potential, phi is non-zero. Because on this boundary there will be some potential. So what I do, I just make exactly at the same height h, I put minus q there. Now on the boundary I am having zero potential. This one is my source charge while this one I will call is image charge. And now we will do our calculation. What will be phi? Phi of x will be equal to according to our previous equation kq x minus x prime plus minus kq over x minus x double prime. This will be the potential. Now, as you know that this minus will become minus here, so I write that minus here, minus q. So kq by x minus x prime, kq by x minus x double prime, where x prime is the position of q and x double prime is the position of image charge minus q. And they are both the same height, same magnitudes there. So now if I would like to find, if I would like to find the electric field, then how I will be able to find it? The very first thing that in such a geometry we will find will be the electric field. Because according to our geometry, we will make our potential, we will write our potential, and then from the potential, we will derive the electric field. And the electric field, you know that this is E equals minus gradient of phi, which you wrote like this as well earlier. Tell you or earlier, the normal derivative of this potential. And the second that we will find is the induced surface charge on the conductor. The induced surface charge. The induced surface charge. Now it's, it's a conductor so we will find this on this conductor and this will be equal the image charge. Now the image charge is also like a induced charge means you move a charged particle to a neutral body then it will generate it will induce some charge there and that charge will be exactly opposite in its polarity and of the same magnitude so this sigma 
what this sigma will be equal to? The induced charge. Sigma will be equal, just from our previous, minus 1 over 4 pi k curly pi over curly n. This will give you the induced charge on the surface. Right? Like, what is this one? Curly pi by curly n is E. Now, you can see this one. Curly pi over curly n is E, including this one. Right? Now, if I move this 4 pi k here, then k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So, 4 pi will cancel. And this will become sigma over epsilon naught. Sigma over epsilon naught was the field due to sheets of charges. One sheet of charge was having sigma over 2 epsilon naught. Two sheet of charges was having sigma over epsilon naught. So this is actually that expression, but I have written in this form. And this is the easy way to write this thing. And then we will calculate the attractive force. The attractive force of the surface on the charge Q. The attractive force on the of the surface of the surface on charge <coughs> Q. How much force charge Q is feeling from the surface? Because over there is a charge which is opposite in polarity to it. So it will be attracted. And the fourth that we will calculate is the work. So what this force will be, by the way? This force will be, this force will be equal to KQ, the magnitude of the charge plus another Q, KQ1, Q2 by R squared. So R squared, this is Q1, Q2. So this is K and Q squared divided by what is R? What is the distance between the two charges? 2H. 2H. So it will become 2H whole squared. The distance between the charges is H plus H. And the fourth that we will do uh, calculate. So the fourth we will calculate the work to remove the charge to infinity. Okay? The work, the work to remove or move, move the charge to infinity. Means this charge is feeling attractive force here. Now how much work will be done on this charge to move it to infinity? It is having some attractive force here. And that will be given by W equals Q times phi. Means charge times potential and that will be equal to this work will be equal to KQ squared by 2H because by R. Q squared by R. Potential is Q by 2H, KQ by 2H, while one charge will be multiplied with this one. So KQ squared by 2H by R because 2H is R. Clear? Okay. If this story is clear, then we will have to uh, now consider a very perfect geometry and on that geometry we will do our calculations. So that geometry is 
This is actually the section on topic 2.2 of Jackson. And this is point charge near grounded conducting sphere. Point charge near grounded conducting sphere. Now here you will have to note few things. Point charge means you are putting point charge. Where? Near. Near. So it means it will induce some charge. The induced charge is called the emit charge. Grounded sphere means the sphere is having no contribution from other charges. It is grounded. Means the potential on the surface of the sphere is zero. And it is conducting as well. That is also important. It is conducting. Whatever is the effect in one place of the surface is everywhere true. For insulating it will not be true. But for conducting it is true. So let me design the figure carefully. And this geometry is a slightly different from the Jackson means just the lines are actually different, rest of the geometry is the same. So